good afternoon, good evening, good morning everyone and, those, and to everyone that still has the courage to watch this show. Uh, this is Lucian Volsan with the Freedom Alternative. I'm here on the outskirts of Jotteborg and I'm here with Joachim Ramstead of Nyheter Dog. Yeah, that has the courage to be on this show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a, it's been quite a proper quite a problem to convince people to come on this show. Yeah. Uh, even even though I came all, all the way from the Intermarium till here, uh, <laughs> it's still a, it's still a problem. So, uh, well, you and I know each other from the internet for quite some time, uh, but uh, probably a significant portion of my audience doesn't know you, so tell us a few words. Oh, where to begin? Um, you want my life story or my <laughs> activism story? Your activism story, because that's short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Well, that started in, I would say, 2008, mm. when I started my uh, my blog, Swedish blog called Daddies. Uh, in October 2008, and uh, for about six months, it lived a pretty anonymous life on the net, <coughs> until I uh, managed to anger the Swedish feminists enough. And when I did, they put me on the first page of Expressen, the big tabloid. And after that, I was a big blog. <laughs> you know, they're not very clever, aren't they? Yeah. Are they? No. And they keep making the same mistake. Yeah. And uh, for a while there, I think I was uh, one of the biggest political blogs in Sweden. And uh, the main topic was father's rights, because that's what sparked my my blogging in the first place, <coughs> I was uh, through the family courts and the social services and the discrimination and I got uh, accused of this and that and couldn't see my kid for four years and I pretty uh, quickly I found, I kind of sussed that the only thing these people are afraid of are publicity. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't get to them by law, no? They just make it up as they go along. Mm -hmm. And if you should succeed to <coughs> report them, it would be to the Justice Ombudsman. And, and that's, uh, they get a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when I, when I managed to build my blog up and, and eventually become pretty big, I became a threat for real. So, I say that that's the reason I managed to get my, my kid back. I basically applied what was then to become the probably the number one rule of anti-feminist activism. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're so terrified of, um, of, of publicity and of, and of sunlight particularly. Mm -hmm. um, so. Tell us more about your experience with the Swedish feminists, because Swedish feminism is something special. I mean, there's feminism as uh, our audience from the United Kingdom, from the US, from Canada might know it. And then there's Swedish feminism, which is a special category within feminism. Mm -hmm. What makes them... First of all, what is a Swedish feminist? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, well, it depends on uh, which degree we're talking. I mean, from good and human upwards. Upwards. Well, we have some really uh, terrible examples, uh, but you know, the high-level feminists, the, the politicians, and the ones that moves around uh, the parliament in Stockholm. They're very, they're very correct, you know. They never. It's it's much like a an MC motorcycle gang, you know. Mm -hmm. The guys in the top, they don't do the dirty work, you know. They have the foot soldiers that, and and they use the same tactics, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like a crime syndicate. <coughs> I would say, yeah. They have their wolf packs that hunts the net, you know, for every person that says something critical. And then they started campaigning. You know, they have groups on Facebook with 
twenty thousand people in it, and they call employers and they uh, they attack you where it hurts, you know, incomes. And um, yeah, me too. I have a thread on on the, the Swedish Reddit. It's called Flashback, you know, uh, where we can discuss anything. And there's a thread about me there that's 1,600 pages long. And it's just vicious, vicious attacks, you know. And they, they don't stop at nothing. And they, and they happily drag your kid into it, even if she's just like six, seven years old. Uh, and they write about, you know, call you a pedophile and whatnot. For daring to disagree with feminism. Yeah, for daring to criticize it openly and to expose the truth about what's going on in these fucking family courts. And where do these foot soldiers, uh, well, they live in Sweden obviously, but where do they work? Uh, are they government en employees or uh, NGOs or what, what are they? Where do they live? Where? I wouldn't say too many of them are from the private sector, no. Um, most of them, I would say, I don't know this, but uh, I would say most of them are low-level state officials. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe kindergarten teachers and uh, social uh, assistants. And I had a nurse. I, I remember her. She was especially she she started an own her own blog. Uh, she called it the truth about daddy. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a bit mutually exclusive, uh, feminists and the truth, but yeah. there we go. There wasn't much truth on it either. You know? uh, yeah, th this is pretty much what uh, Anneli has also told us that uh, the, the most dangerous of them seem to be these, uh, you know vice head, headmaster of a, uh, of a school in a small town or uh, the assistant teacher or yeah it's very very low level but you you find them in the public sector most of the time yeah or in NGOs funded by the state yep yep which, which is, is essentially public sector too the the anti discrimination agency for instance they discriminating on what's fine and uh, now uh, there's a bureau uh -huh. uh, uh, it's an NGO bureau it's in Stockholm Gothenburg Uppsala everywhere and they get millions from the state uh, to fight discrimination, mm -hmm. you know, these are the fuckers that go on about uh, horrible white heterosexual men, and and, and they fight discrimination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they fight all discrimination, provided that it's not against men. Well, if I go there as a father and say I'm I'm being discriminated against, they would fucking laugh at me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's not that kind of. And I I, uh, I reported the the authorities to discriminating ombudsman and too, mm. and I got a reply saying, "Well, we've heard reports about fathers being discriminated, but there's no way to prove it, so we'll just drop it. <laughs> no way to prove it. <laughs> Mothers win ninety percent of all the fucking cases, no." It, it, it is it is interesting this level of denial and it seems to have seeped into uh, pretty much all sectors of the society I mean uh, the and we we'll, we we'll get sooner enough with the journalists as well uh, it, it's just denial seems to be the national sport with uh, too many not just state workers but many people in the general society too they call us deniers uh -huh. we deny that women are being discriminated against. You know? Well, I also deny that the earth is flat, and I also deny that... Uh, the, the, yeah, you're a denier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll oh, God be a denier. Yeah, and we ask them, in what way are you discriminated against? Mm -hmm. Well, we get less pay. That's usually the only thing they can come up with. And not even that's true. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, they earn less, but that's a different story. Yeah. That doesn't it? But, or it is discrimination, but it's discrimination based on skill. But they don't make less money for the same job. Oh, of course not. No. Of course not. 
actually uh, they have surpassed us now in, in lots of sectors here in Sweden and um, but they're, they're um, they have cleverly infiltrated all parts of the society they know where it's important to, to uh, they've started with the universities and they're working their way up uh, the, the justice uh, sector now 70% of all the judges are women and all of them are of course members of Hilda which is a semi-secret feminist organization for uh, justice uh, mm -hmm. workers you know. it's sort of a common purpose for yeah, they, their their aim is to promote women in the justice department. I see. Yeah, and they really done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be such a huge problem if they would just promote more women. It no, no, it's not any women. It's it feminists, it of course. It has to be feminist yeah, yeah. women, right, right, right. Um, and I, I presume that none of this ever goes into the mainstream media. I mean, nobody questions no. whether that's really necessary, whether that's really fair for the uh, due process of Swedish citizens. No, the, the, there might be... Uh, there was an article the other day in Dagens Juridik, it's, it's called... Um, mm -hmm. How do you translate that? Law of Today magazine? Uh, yeah, the, the daily uh, judicial... Yeah, judicial. yeah. Uh, and actually... Guy, one guy had noted that it's more and more women coming in and less and less men and mm -hmm. this might actually be a problem you know but it's never picked up by the mainstream mm -hmm. well, again it wouldn't be such a problem if it were you know very qualified women the fact that it's they are also chosen by ideology uh, that's what makes it a huge problem um, now let's talk a little bit about journalism. You're a journalist uh, in Sweden, which is, in my opinion, the hardest job, especially if you're not part of the, uh, I would say, the Aftonbladet Express and Dagens Nyheter trifecta. That would be a hard place to to work. Mm. For you? Yeah, yeah, for me. <laughs> um, I think for any true journalist, mm -hmm. you know, the one that the ones that take it seriously. I can't understand how they stand to work at SVT or Aftonbladet. I, I, I mean, they must go home and hate themselves every day. Or simply lack of conscience, I guess. Yeah, but then you don't take it seriously. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's still surprising that the SVT still has uh, viewers, an audience. Well, we, c we can't avoid it because uh, if you own a TV, you have to have those channels. Well, you can uh, you can't avoid paying for it. I guess. No, you you can't avoid paying for it, and and, and it's in every fucking cable package you buy. Mm -hmm. You have the state TV, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's why you have to pay a certain license fee as well. So we pay for our own brainwashing, mm -hmm. you know, basically. And uh, it all started when uh, they appointed the new head of SVT. And it was a pretty radical feminist uh, who got the job, and already then I knew. I mean, okay, we'll take that path, mm -hmm. and it has really. They try to mask it because SVT, by law, has to be uh, neutral, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody and and give everybody a voice. That's the whole idea, mm -hmm. you know. But it doesn't, not anymore. Granted, there are still a few good uh, digging journalists working there, um, but uh, whenever they dig too far, their materials get sidetracked, cancelled. Well, uh, I used to know a guy, um, one, a very famous uh, reporter in Sweden, Hannes Rostam. Mm -hmm. He was the one that. Uh, Exposed the quick case, if you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, he actually called me up after reading my blog once, and uh, 
we were started talking about uh, I can't remember the reason he called me but we ended up talking for hours uh, <coughs> and um, and I had another uh, case that I was working on a very uh, high publicity rape case in Sweden uh, where a 15 year old guy a, b a boy was accused of raping uh, two girls uh, in a school uh, up north and and SVT did a, a story on it and the day after this young boy received about 3,000 hate mails <laughs> in one day mm -hmm. and was it a legitimate case or no ah. I, uh, as soon as I saw that I my alarm bells started ringing, you know. So I decided uh, I'll dig into that. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the family and uh, and I uh, went through all the documents, and it was all bullshit, you know. And I t I told Rostam this, mm -hmm. and I said you won't do anything about it because you work on SVT, mm -hmm. and they were the ones that publicized these lies. Did the hit piece in the yeah. first You know what he said. I don't take uh, I don't take that kind of um, dismissal. I don't care. He said, uh -huh. basically, yeah. you know. And then he went and ordered all the documents on SVT's uh, bill, mm -hmm. ten thousand or something, mm -hmm. and he started going through it. And and I thought, yeah, finally, mm -hmm. this might be. Because I had written about it, and I've gotten a lot of shit. That was when the real, um, when the wolf packs really started to come after me. <coughs> so he went through the documents, and he he called the uh, Barbi Youth Prison where they held the kid, and he said, um, which is in Uppsala too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically a place where they reprogram sexually violent boys. And he, uh, the, the the kid was, you know, he was working, uh, he was getting along and, and didn't cause any problems and he even accepted going through treat treatment, mm -hmm. you know, even though he didn't do anything. But when it came to the point in, in, the, in the treatment where he was supposed to write a letter of apology mm -hmm. to the girl he'd never raped, mm -hmm. he said, no, I can't do that. So they just kept him in there you know indefinitely uh, he was sentenced to three months but he spent like one and a half years isn't that illegal yep it should be but th th they used the LVU law oh. yeah so they could have basically kept him until he could turn 18 basically yeah okay and uh, Hannes Rostam they ca he called up that youth prison. He said, yeah, this is Hans Rost, I'm, I'm from SPT and I want to uh, come and interview mm -hmm. uh, this kid. The day after, they had transferred him to Kiruna. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those who doesn't know, is a little town as far as north in Sweden as you can come. <laughs> It's basically the Swedish definition of middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, Hannes Rostam uh, got sick. Uh, a few weeks after that, he got the um, cancer uh -huh. and uh, died a year later. So he never had time to to do anything. But uh, you know, there are still a few honest. Well, at least they were. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and uh, then we have uh, Jan Josefsson, also a very famous reporter, mm -hmm. SVT, and he's a little bit of a black sheep there, mm. but he's so popular and famous they can't get rid of him. Because it would be a bigger scandal to sack him yeah. than to keep him. Yeah. Uh, I see. So, all, so where do where does anyone? Uh, I mean the honest people that want to take journalism seriously, where do they write now? They, what, they're all consigned to Nihotei Dog, a big slog? Uh, the, the, the alternative, the the alternative news, yeah, 
Fria Tider is a big. Fria Tider, yeah. Yeah, that's the biggest one, I think. But they're based on Malta. <laughs> yeah, Dispatch International, when it existed, was based in Denmark. Even yeah. Even though they wrote in English and Swedish. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Nia Trida, which is basically the creation of one man, mm-hmm. Shang Frick. Uh, I work for him now, but he um, he built that. He used to be an SD member. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he uh, he quit his membership and he started this paper. And he has built it from nothing, and and now it's bigger than Uppsala Nyatining, mm-hmm. you know. And he is a good reporter. Uh, but what he does is, he, you know, he his main goal probably is to expose the other media. Mm-hmm. You know, he has a big war on with DM, for instance, <coughs> Dagens Nyheter. Yeah, yeah, but uh, well, there was that case where the Dagens Nyheter covered the, uh, covered up the cases of yeah. roping at the Stockholm yeah. festival, and he just never stopped asking the questions until the until. Dagens Nyheter had to admit that, yeah, we pretty much... Yeah. No, he found proof, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it forced Dagens Nyheter to apologize and yeah. basically admit to all of the charges and plead guilty in the court of public opinion, which is something that I don't remember happening uh, in the last... No, the, I mean, years. he's so big now so that he can get away with humiliating Dagens Nyheter in that way. Uh-huh. You know, they can't touch him. They tried. They tried to scandalize him, uh, claiming he is owning, he's making millions that he hides and don't tax and blah blah. And what he did then was that he uh, he went home to his very very simple apartment in one of the Swedish no-go zones, mm-hmm. Hallunda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he took some photos uh, in his very very old sofa. <laughs> 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 Welcome to my place. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a nice way of uh, uh, mm. of turning the tables on them. Um, sadly, he lives very very far away from any area of Stockholm because uh, it it has gone through my mind that I should probably try to interview him. Yeah, but probably next time uh, this will happen for sure. And, um, the, and the funny part is that um, while being accused of being a racist. He uh, himself is half Jewish, half gypsy. <laughs> yeah. So he used to usually jokes about, you know, when I come into a store, I don't know if I should haggle or steal. <laughs> <laughs> now I can see why he's not so popular with the uh, political correct types. Uh, although, although he does seem to know, uh, and I've, I've been following uh, most of the uh, most of his activity with me. He does seem to know agit prop. He does seem to know when to use emotion, when to turn the tables against them. And I can tell you one thing about him too is that he is fucking um, really, really uh, particular about writing fact. No, you know, meticulous. If it is, if it isn't checked at least three times, mm-hmm. he can get nasty. He's a very demanding uh, mm-hmm. boss, you know. Uh, I have been yelled at more than once, but but there, I don't know any journalist in Sweden who is more careful uh, about facts. So he basically applies to his employees the same standards that he applies to himself. Yeah. I mean, after a lot of you can get away with writing sloppy stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if I had a dollar for every time I read something sloppy in the Afton blood, that uh, now I could have afforded to come with my own private jet to Sweden. <laughs> well, he, he knows that he is in the target, mm. you know. Every so uh, he has to be extra careful. Yeah, yeah. He does the slightest mistake, they're on him. Mm. Yeah. So he is very, very careful. Uh, but he 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 has done uh, more than one big scoop. If you remember um, the scandal about uh, the environmental party, mm-hmm. uh, Osa Romson, yeah. they banned the use of green diesel mm-hmm. because it was so poisonous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it turned out the boat where Osa Romson herself lived, they had a heater 
a diesel heater. <laughs> and the tank was full of fucking green diesel. <laughs> 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 he exposed that. What a surprise. The environmentalists don't uh, live up to the expectations that they try to impose upon the rest of us. No. Uh, I'm not. Uh, that's not really a surprise. I mean, it's, it's part and parcel of being an environmentalist. But you said uh, they tried to come after him. And I've heard this syntagm, uh, this expression, uh, with almost every, every single person that I spoke with since I've been in Sweden for almost a week now. What is they and what are some of those methods? Because it sounds, it, it's all a whispering, it's all of DDR type of... Yeah, well in, the, in that case it was Bonniers, the big publishing company, uh -huh. uh, which is very tied uh, with the political establishment uh, in, in Stockholm. And they have uh, a lot of magazines, uh, they own Expressen for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if, if they own Dongs Neater too, I, I don't... Shares at... Uh, maybe. But I don't know if they have the majority shares. And they publish books and, they, and they're, they're big, you know. And, and they had this obscure new online magazine uh, of course, very feministic. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but that was them that time mm -hmm. that tried to scandalize him. Mm -hmm. But they had done very sloppy work. None of it was true. Mm. No. But now, Nietzsche Dog actually turn over one million Swedish crowns a year. Mm. That's quite a lot for an online paper. Yeah, and uh, they still try to get at him. Uh, contacting advertisers, advertisers and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, last time I think it was Express and that that uh, called the the um, electronic company LG. Mm -hmm. You know, asking them why they were advertising at his site, mm -hmm. which led to that they stopped advertising. Mm. Yeah. How did the uh, because it, it does seem to me I mean. The guys from LG probably know nothing about anyone. They probably no. They're just afraid to. Yeah, they're just afraid of a PR scandal. Yeah. But how did how did all of these ended up in bed together so tightly knit? Uh, I suspect because Stockholm is really a small city, <laughs> but uh, it just seems like it's a it's almost always the same people. <laughs> Sweden is a small country. Well, it's yeah. a it's a duck pond. You know, mm. everybody who is something knows everybody else. You know, mm. and uh, yeah, well, the Netherlands is a small country too, but you don't have this kind of this particular type of establishment that all of the organizations are very connected to each other. And uh, I don't know why Sweden is so infected with political correctness. And somebody described it the other day, which I think was very fitting. Sweden is the dirtiest whore in the American brothel. <laughs> 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 and it's quite, it's, it's quite fitting actually. The thing is that uh, at the very least uh, if it's a whore in the American brothel couldn't you have adopted the free speech from the owner of the brothel? <laughs> oh yeah, that would be a good thing. Uh, but we don't have the um, American constitution here. Mm. And I suspect quite a few of them don't wish that they didn't have it either. Oh yeah, for sure. If you ask some of the members of the Democratic Party, they're definitely yeah <clears throat> very upset that things like the First and the Second Amendment exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, at least they don't get the choice on that one. Uh, but but talking about constitution, uh, we we have a it was a very uh, peculiar change made in our constitution. It, they kind of sneaked it in. Nobody noticed, but it used to say in Sweden everybody is worth the same and are you know entitled to the same treatment. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. You know how how can it be more equ equality than that? You know, mm -hmm. but they they um, feminists they couldn't get around that law, so they had to change it, right? Mm -hmm. So now it says. In Sweden, everybody is equal and are supposed to be treated the same, unless it's a matter of 
uh, women's um, uh, equal equality with men <laughs> you know because then you can just do whatever the fuck you like now especially do whatever the fuck feminists want uh, isn't there a, I mean what is the process of amending the constitution isn't there supposed to be uh, yeah there's supposed to be an election between or in the referendum yeah, yeah. but this was done in I can't it was, it was I can't remember exactly what year but I think it was during the 80s 90s sometime and nobody told us mm. you know so it was basically amended they, without, uh, without a referendum yeah no referendum no no and they would just kind of adjust it a bit <laughs> amazing uh, yeah <coughs> so uh, holy shit I mean I, I, I do I, I had no idea about this and uh, this pretty much puts another nail into the uh, definitiveness of the argument that this is the DDR. I mean, try to try amending the constitution through the back door anywhere in Europe, and you might get some protests because no, the constitutions get amended through a referendum. Yeah. Try doing that in Ireland, and good luck with that. Swedes are good at many things. Protesting is not one of them. Uh -huh. You know, we are uh, very obedient people and we trust our uh, authorities you know uh, that's how that's how we brought up you know uh, it's like we're sleepwalkers most most of us I was too mm -hmm. until I was rudely awoken mm -hmm. myself uh, ending up in this custody battle that's when I noticed that this shit's fucked up you know, they even changed my uh, ch child's words from the interrogation in the social report. You know. Now that's some uh, old world uh, type of corruption right there. Yeah, and they tried to keep uh, the original tapes secret from me. You know, they refused to hand it out to me. Mm -hmm. You know, because it never went to to um, I was never indicted I was just uh, suspected mm -hmm. right not you you don't have the right to see the documents un unless you're indicted mm -hmm. right so other than that they can do whatever they want and falsify whatever they please yeah, yeah. without any checks and balances mm -hmm. and this seems to be a recurring t theme almost any sort of check and balance on the power of the state that existed in the past seems to have been eroded. Uh, I was discussing with this friend of mine who is uh, uh, soon to be a lawyer and he explained for instance that there is the, the uh, sex shop login, the, the, the Swedish model of, uh, yeah. <laughs> of prostitution, the sex buying law. Mm -hmm. uh, basically now they want to uh, use to extend it to e apply to if a Swedish citizen buys sex from abroad, let's say from Denmark where yeah, it's yeah. legal, you could be indicted in Sweden for breaking the Swedish law even though you weren't in Sweden and uh, there used to be a, a judicial committee who would come in and say no this is insane and it's unenforceable and even more so it breaches international treaties uh, which Sweden is part of but nowadays the politician can just say we don't care people don't really understand the Swedish uh, prostitution laws I think mm -hmm. I think most people uh, abroad would think that yeah prostitution that's illegal in Sweden Mm -hmm. But it's not. No, it's no. Big. It's it's perfectly legal to sell sex in Sweden. Anybody can come here and do it. Mm -hmm. But if you buy it, yeah, your clients would be in trouble. Yeah, Basically. yeah. It's, it's the buyers. They criminalize the buyers because they're mostly men, right? Mm -hmm. Although the, I think there there was a report like two years ago that it's like forty seven percent of the people that bought, bought, that sell sex in Sweden are actually men. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah. That's another big secret they don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the S Swedish women that want to buy sex, they usually go abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, Africa was a big. Um, Kenya. Yeah, yeah, and Jamaica. Yeah. But now they import them here instead. <laughs> 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 Sorry, strike that. Right. Let's speak about <coughs> migration a little bit. Um, you and I talked about it many times before, but 
uh, it's basically there was a time when Sweden was allowing a certain level of immigration and things went relatively well yeah with minimum amount of shenanigans minimum amount of trouble for the ordinary people yeah the last big immigration wave in Sweden was in the Yugoslavian wars uh, we we took a lot of refugees from Yugoslavia mm-hmm. yeah uh, but they have integrated well into the Swedish society mm-hmm. um, the people coming now I don't see that happening no no I don't see it either, and I've just been uh, uh, two days ago from where we're, from when we were filming. I've, I've been to Rinkeby, I've been to Tiensta, I've uh, been to the outskirts of Södertälje. Uh, yeah, I don't see the integration either. No, no. Why that is, I don't know. Some people say that Muslims don't want to integrate. But um, in any way, I mean, no matter where people come from, it's fucking lunacy to just open your doors Mm -hmm. and let everybody just Mm -hmm. walk in. That's what they did. 160,000 people, we don't know who the fuck they are, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And And the American lefties, when when they hear things like this, they're like, "Yeah, well, it's not really a big deal." Well, it is if your country is ten million inhabitants. Mm-hmm. It happens. is a big deal. It's the it's the. It's almost two percent of the population. 1. Yeah, 6. it's the size of the Swedish fifth biggest city. Yeah, you know you What's, what? What are we supposed to do? Big, uh, build another, Uppsala. Yeah. Where are they gonna live? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Then they came up with this. Yeah, we build portable houses. Right, and we we uh, we will allow them temporary um, building uh, permits, you know, for fifteen years, and then we put up portable houses there. <coughs> That's a great solution, you know. In Gothenburg, uh, which is the biggest city where I live, they um, they went crazy for this idea. You know, we're gonna build a thousand of these. You know? Where? Well, uh, the idea was to build them in in nicer areas, you know, to to uh, promote Im- integration, <sighs> you know. So, a thousand apartments, right? You know how many was built before they pulled the plug on that project? I don't know, fifteen, twenty, fifty-seven. Ah, yeah, they have fifty-seven of them now. Uh, these uh, portable barracks, mm-hmm. you know, in Lerum which is a nice area, you know. You know what the the rent for a three-room apartment is? Uh, It's like uh, 2,100 euros or something, a month. (laughs) (laughs) You know that that's what happens when you give 15-year building permits because the company building the shit, they want their money back, right? So they have to charge these rents. Mm -hmm. And, And people was warning about this. Don't do this. The big building companies, the experts, they say, don't do this. This is a very, very bad idea. But they, in their usual style, uh, they went ahead. Yeah, but uh, if the permit is for 15 years, then what, what's hap- what happens after the permit expires? Well, uh, they have to tear them down. That sounds inefficient. Yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> Swedish politics. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the future and then we can wrap this up. Do you have any hope? And if yes, are you optimistic? Not really that optimistic? Well, I ran my blog for five years. And I I struck some really hard blows. I did. I mean, ending up on the front page of Expressing. That's quite a performance. Yeah. Serious congratulations for that. (coughs) I also have... uh, um, there's a very famous Swedish uh, feminist novelist called Maria Svelon. She wrote a book about uh, the hate, internet mm-hmm. haters, and I got three pages in that book. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> and they even they, she even quoted me, telling the truth. 
<laughs> well, <coughs> I got off track. What was the question? The question is how optimistic you are. Do you think things can change? Do you have any hope? That's a tough one because well, there's hope. Um, we have a social conservative party in Sweden for the first time ever which is now in the polls they get like 25% mm -hmm. and they're growing what the other parties do then is they team up you know to keep them out that's what they did in the last election mm -hmm. and that's what they will do in the next election mm -hmm. so unless they get over 50% I don't I don't see them getting much influence but of course, in the last election they got 13%, and now they're up to 25 mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's a good progression. Mm -hmm. uh, and people are starting to wake up, I think, mm -hmm. more and more. And the, and the mainstream media, they do absolutely everything they can to scandalize these guys, but nothing seems to stick. The more they try, the more they grow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in that sense, you can be optimistic. But right now, they're sitting on, in every, uh, you know, institution that has power, that they're there, you know. You got <coughs> the state television, radio, the, all the big magazines, um, political parties, uh, judicial system. Mm -hmm. They fucking infested it all. So, yeah, it'll be tough. They won't go, you know, willingly. Yeah, they won't go down easily. No. Uh, when I spoke to Jenny at uh, at the Java political event uh, over in Tiensta, uh, she was like, yeah, we'll probably get 25, 26% and, and we're going to be harder to ignore. Yeah. Uh, they will be harder to ignore, but they can still ignore them. But that means the the socialists and and the the right wing parties has to team up against them now, and that won't be easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the social democrats and the the moderates they don't have much in common. No. But they would have to. Or someone from moderata now starts breaking ranks and starts. The th funny thing is that though that <coughs> SD. Sweden Democrats had the most uh, foreign born voters, immigrants, mm -hmm. voting for them. It's like the center party, the, the one that Amelie was a member of. Mm -hmm. They're a very, very uh, immigration liberal party. They didn't get one immigrant voting for them. <laughs> no, not one. Why is that? Why do you think that is the case? Well, because. Um, the immigrants that was living here before this new wave th they were um, they're the ones living in these areas where uh, that has become um, no -go zones. war zones almost huh? you know uh, cars burn uh, stones are thrown at the police and and, uh, and they're policed internally very uh, harsh by uh, religious fundamentalists mm -hmm. of course they don't like it you know yeah, and also the Swedish Democrats also have the most immigrants uh, working for them actively uh, so I'll instead of being praised for attracting immigrants into the political process they get flagged from everyone particularly from the political parties that attract nobody yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it <coughs> One of the reasons, and we've been, uh, I've been with the uh, to uh, Söderborg, which is the most uh, lefty area in uh, where in Söderborg. Söderborg. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where the lefties live in Stockholm, mm. it's that place where there is a vegan store a every other thirty meters, and Feminist Initiative has like forty percent. Uh, I, I don't think I exaggerate when I say that ninety percent of all the mainstream media journalists live there. So it's basically uh, a literal case. I mean, they they accused, and many people accused this in the United States. But at the very least, in the United States, you have the 
coastal elites so there are at least two different places that compete with each other uh, but in Sweden it's a literal case of a cartel everyone lives in the exact same neighborhood well neighborhoods because there are two basically but in the, ex or the exact same place in a particular spot of the capital city and I think you have to <coughs> separate though the extreme ide ideologists mm -hmm. the ones that really have bought into the <coughs> you know feminism as a as the solution you know for equality and, uh, and they actually believe it you know but most feminists in Sweden I would say are just you know they have sussed out that you know you have to be a feminist uh, you know in order to get funding in order to get uh, political advancement in order to get you know whatever <coughs> so you know and people aren't stupid yeah. maybe it's us that's stupid that's, <laughs> you know. yeah it is profitable to be a feminist oh very I mean we were uh, we were looking at that list of funding yeah five million kroner to talk ab to make a study about angry white men and uh, yeah three million kroner for uh, what it was studying the gender in 1940s literature yeah yeah uh, seven million yeah Jesus yeah uh, I mean it is profitable I mean the state has made it profitable yeah they fucking throw money at them you know they i mean when the the um right wing alliance won the election in uh, the, the the former one it was in nine, 2009 uh, yeah. or 10 9 9 yeah the fir one of the first decisions was to uh, um set aside 1 billion swedish kroner to fight domestic violence or men's violence what well, as they call it mm -hmm. you know one billion mm -hmm. that's a hundred million euro, euros a thousand mil yeah a hundred million euros yeah. yeah that's a lot of money it's quite a lot for, for a country of only 10 million people yeah. that's quite a lot four years later the money was gone and no one can really say to where you know it's just it's like they got sucked into this black hole you know and no one cares I mean I know what they use the money on uh, there was a project down in southern Sweden somebody uh, some feminist uh, had <laughs> come up with the idea to, s to sell cunt pants what is that you never heard of cunt pants? No. <laughs> no. Well, they they actually uh, figured out that it's very unfair that men, when they have to take a leak, just can open the flyer mm -hmm. and hang it out, and, mm -hmm. and women couldn't do that. Very very unfair. Yeah, biology is sexist. Yeah. What else is new? <laughs> So they actually came up with this design on pants with a, that has had a zipper that went like all the way oh. under, you know. <laughs> and they got millions. <laughs> and the state paid for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? I mean, I've I've read something about that, but it was in the United States and it was with private funding. I thought it's stupid, but whatever, their money, their business. Yeah. But the state to pay for this? They pay for all that fucking crap. I mean, you should look into that. It's yeah, I, I, I'll definitely win. So it's <coughs> Fita. Fit Pixel. Fit Pixel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? And and then they have the case of the gender trumpet. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, I think I do remember. I, I think I did read about that though. Yeah. Uh, there was some some <laughs> some uh, feminist in in the musical uh, high school, I think that uh, wrote a report about trumpet being a phallus symbol yeah it's a phallic symbol yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you become a feminist in sweden it could be very profitable yeah and the thing is that it has gotten to such an extent that whatever bollocks you spout you'll definitely find an academic to think that that's something, that's something deep yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> right Th this is why i'm very uh, 
limited with my optimism and very limited with my uh, hope. Yeah, me too, actually. Because rooting out all of that rot that has seeped into everywhere. It's not a question of rooting out the the rot. I mean, that would be pretty easy. It's 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 um, yeah, we just cut their funding. It's erasing the rot that they have put into people's heads. That's yeah. the tough part. That's the poison of the mind. Yeah. And because, as you said, the, the ideologues... Uh, and they have become very good propaganda. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's remarkably efficient. Mm -hmm. Much much more efficient than pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, a similar crap has been tried in schools in Italy and in Austria and even in Britain and the Netherlands. It mildly worked, but for the most part it didn't. But in Sweden, it's remarkably efficient. Yeah. <coughs> That's true. Right. Well, thanks a lot for coming to my program. Uh, where can people find your work at this moment? At this moment? Well, I, I write for Nyheter Idag. Nyheter Idag. Mm -hmm. uh, News Today. Mm -hmm. But that's just, I just write uh, articles now, uh, journalistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm under hard supervision mm -hmm. from Shang. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I can't really write my opinions there. Mm -hmm. I just report the facts now. Mm -hmm. Which can be very effective too, depending on what facts you decide to report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, that's the whole idea really. Um, because we write about the stuff the mainstream doesn't. No. Yeah. And we make them look stupid. <laughs> well, I wish you good luck with that. I really would love to see, uh, not now, but in two or three years, I would really want to see all of these, um, especially the media, the, the day and the SVT, the, I would really want to see them trembling a little bit with a bloody nose like we see like we saw uh, at the beginning of this year we saw cnn and msnbc going full retard yeah uh out of fear yeah uh that was a very good lesson it was a watershed moment yeah i would like to see the swedish media doing that and i uh, that's our only hope really mm -hmm. i mean uh, if we can wake enough people to oppose this shit. Mm -hmm. That's the only only hope we have. It's really a battle, a, a guerrilla battle for hearts and minds. Isn't yeah, it? yeah it's, a, it's a war of the minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. But I can tell you that, um, unlike Aftonbladet and Expressen and all those, <coughs> we, we write the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't write anything that hasn't been checked at least three times. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're on the, um, monitoring system as well in Sweden if you want to report our magazine for anything mm -hmm. you know if we've written anything untrue or you know violated someone or whatever you can report us mm -hmm. you know and uh, no one has yet mm. you know express enough about it to get reported all the time <laughs> <laughs> so so while the media complains that the heterodox is hateful and yeah, whatnot, yeah. They don't actually use the legal tools, no. <laughs> because that would mean no. They they wouldn't have stand to, a chance. I mean, yeah, they have to present evidence. Exactly, and they can't. You know? how surprising. Yeah. Right then, I wish you good luck with the uh, with that, and I'm, I'm hoping that you'll soon enough uh, blog again. Uh, your your old blog is still uh, active, right? It's still open. It's still there. All right. Uh, I'll put a link in the description with that one if you want to learn more about the background. Yeah. Um, I have uh, actually two blogs. Um, There's a story behind behind that too. But I started my first blog in October 2008, and <coughs> and back then I was I was furious. I was fueled by anger, and uh, that's that's the blog that you know, really upset a lot of people. Uh, and especially the, the, the commune that I was at war with, mm -hmm. the one that took my daughter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what, uh, what they did eventually was that they, um, they kicked a lot of people out uh, 
involved in my case and they put a new management in and they contacted me and they said uh, should we end this now because it had gotten pretty uh, yeah it was a nuisance to them you know and I said sure I'll close this blog if you start doing your fucking job so we made a deal you know I closed my blog they started to doing their job so but I opened another one <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually that is one and that is two uh -huh. and so that's the story of the two in that link yeah right I never I didn't I never knew that there yeah. we go I learned something new today mm -hmm. right then with all of that being said and you learned about the cunt pants uh, yeah and the cunt pants there you go there you go yeah yeah. Uh, see, this is why what this is why people should come to Sweden. A great breakthrough for humanity. Right. Cheers. Right. And with all of that being said, thank you once again for coming to my program. Uh, tomorrow, uh, basically in about five hours, six actually six hours, I have to wake up. So we will have to go with the cameras and videotape. Uh, around this city so sticky uh, so quite a lot of work ahead uh, especially for myself and then of course he has to go to work <laughs> yeah yeah and I have to uh, figure out an agenda for you tomorrow to do yeah, yeah. in Gothenburg yeah it's gonna be complicated but anyway it's all for you uh, who watched uh, so thanks a lot for you for tuning in thanks a lot again for coming to my program and with all of that being said thank you and see you soon cheers